In this tutorial, we'll get our knight to move. Let's see how that's done. All right, we find ourselves in Unity once again, and let's make our knight move. So first things first, let's duplicate our last scene here by pressing Ctrl D, and then let's rename it to six movement. And we will also need a new script. So right click on our scripts folder, create C new C sharp script, and that's going to be the player movement script. Also double click on the scene so you change it. You know that you're in the right scene once in the hierarchy here it says six movement and select the player and drag the player movement script onto it. So now the player has the player movement script added. We can now double click on it and open it up. So as a general idea when it comes to movement there are plenty of different types and I've talked about that in another video where I actually showed five different ways of moving in Unity. You can check that video out on the top right corner. We'll basically use the most reliable of those five different movement types right now. For that, what we're going to do is we're first going to need a private float speed. So this controls the speed of the character. This is going to be a serialized field just so that we can change it inside of the inspector as well. We will also need a private rigid body 2D. We're going to talk about what that is in just a little bit. And then we will also need a vector 2 called axis movement. It doesn't necessarily need to be called axis movement, but I think that that's a clear once I show what we're actually going to save in that. And the body, so the rigid body is going to be equal to a get component rigid body 2D. So this simply gets a component from this game object that this script is attached to. Last Last time we've seen that the knight has a had a sprite renderer added to it so this would be a component and now the player movement is a component and now we're basically looking for a rigid body component so we will add this after we have we're done with the script so we're going to get this in the start method and in the update method we're going to set the axis movement to something particular and that is going to be axis movement x is going to be equal to input dot get axis raw horizontal and then we can just duplicate this by pressing Control D and then Y is going to be a vertical. It's very important that those strings are written correctly. So definitely double check if that is correct. Then we will need another method from Unity and that is going to be the fixed update. So we can just type in fixed update and then autocomplete with tab. In there we want to call another method which is going to be the move method. If you have a suggestion here just hit escape so it doesn't trigger the actual suggestion and then you can call the method move. And in there what we're going to do is we're going to set the velocity of the body equal to the normalized axis movement times the speed. Now this might be absolutely crazy for you. Just a second, let's go through this. What does this mean? The idea is that the body, so the, the rigid body, has a certain velocity. It's basically the physics system and the velocity is just a certain speed that, a, that an object can have. In this case, an object that has a rigid body attached to it. The axis movement is simply a two-dimensional vector. So we have a x and a y component to, to that and we normalize that so that the magnitude is 1. And that's very important for diagonal movement because if we have a positive y and a positive x, so this would be going into the diagonal movement and how vector math works, that would be more than 1. Normalizing this simply means that you always have a vector of length 1. Only the direction changes in that case. And multiplying by the speed simply, of course, increases the speed. And there's one more thing that we're also going to do, and that is going to be a private void check for flipping method. Now, this might be a really weird name, but we're going to call this right here. And the idea of this being that... We actually want to flip not only the sprite, I have shown you last time that you can flip the sprite right here, but that is only a visual flip. You can flip the entire game object by going to this transform here and the scale and then just timesing it by negative one. So if we put this to negative one, as you can see, all of a sudden the knight has turned around and if I put it to one again, then they turn around again. And that's what we want to do. So basically we have two booleans inside of here. So if we're moving left, what would moving left be? Well. If we move left, then axis movement x is smaller than zero because we're moving left, so in the negative x direction. And then we can duplicate this, also look for moving right, and that would then, of course, be in the positive x direction. We actually do not want to check for equal zero because we actually want the direction that the character looks in to stay the same when we stop moving. So then we're calling if moving left, 
and then we'll set the transform local scale equal to a new vector of three, which is going to be negative one. So this is when we're moving left. Then we're going to flip the entire game object around. And for Y, we're just going to stay here and we can actually keep it like this. So we don't actually even need to get in the Z coordinate. This should be fine. And then let's copy this over and put in moving right here. And then instead of negative one, we have a normal one. Right now, let's call this move method in the fixed update. Lo and behold, that is it. Certain parts of this might be a little bit confusing, but overall the script isn't that crazy. Check for flipping really only makes sure that the visuals are correct when we move. And for the move method, we really only have one line that's important here. So if we now have the knight, if we now start, we're actually going to get an error. Let's see if that is the case. And indeed we're getting an error. That is the missing component exception. If you get that, that simply means that there is no rigid body on the knight and that's why we get this error. So we actually have to add the rigid body here. So when clicking on add component, you can search for this rigid body 2D. And then there are two things that we want to do. Number one, set this to never sleep and put the gravity scale to zero. And then we can actually close this up, save it. And now we should be able to start and also move our knight. So if I now press the S key, I move down, W up and then D to the right. And now if I press the A key, let's see if we also flip around. And indeed we do. And as I can see, whether or not I move up and down, doesn't matter, I am st I'm staying flipped around. If I want to increase the speed, I can do this here, for example, so I can increase it to five. And then as you can see, I'm zooming around, maybe even faster, eight. You know, this can be changed and this can also be changed in game, of course, because this is a variable and you could, for example, either make it public so that you can access it from outside the script. Or in theory, you could, of course, also make a method that can change this as well. One fun thing is you can make it negative and then if I press the W key, then as you can see, I'm moving left and uh, so I'm basically, so with negative speed, I have inverted the controls. So that is one way that you can, for example, invert the controls, which is really funny, but that is how the basic movement actually works. Yeah, and believe it or not, that is actually all you need for very simple player movement. Like always, you find a link to the GitHub repository as well as all of the scripts in the description below and I hope you found this useful and you learned something new if you did I would of course really appreciate a like and I will see you in the next tutorial so yeah